Good day all, I wrap Cena Blinn and Associates with your metals market wrap up and this is for Wednesday, September 11th, 2019. And obviously it's an important day. Uh, I remember 18 years ago and I pray that all you do and uh, I can just tell you it was a terrible event. I lost friends in it uh, that were there, not people I sort of knew and it, it, just terrible. All right, looking at how the market is, uh, Another up day, as you can see in stocks, we're following through a bit here nicely in the gold market and holding some key areas in silver. Now, for those of you that got my gold report, you take a look on our website at the area that I was predicting that the support might come in. I, you know, I, nobody knows, but it was a prediction and we're doing pretty much what I was talking about there. But remember that report goes off on, I think it's Friday or Saturday, so it'll be off the website. You want to take a look at it. All right, and you, all you need to do is go to www.irapstein.com and from there, by the way, under education, you'll see the metals report. As you can see, a small coming back in the after hours, actually it's the beginning of the new trading session in the uh, rebob gasoline and the crude. And I want to remind you, I'm after five o'clock, so even your metal prices, this is part of tomorrow, which is Thursday's trade already. Now the elephant in the room is going to show itself early and it's going to be the European Central Bank that comes out with its monetary policy announcement. Uh, I believe it's going to be around 6.30 in the morning or so Chicago time and then Mr. Draghi's conference begins and I'll be watching that like everybody else looking for clues as to what the bank is doing or seeing them explain their actions. I don't know what's going to happen or a lack of actions. It could be anything. When we look at the gold, we've in a corrective mode. The market is down $10 for the week on a closing basis, and it is now about $27 from its peak closing high price, 1526.60. When we look at the chart action, you can see how the market came down here. It's gotten a little bit of a bounce, but has the market changed anything? Not really. What you still have is a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. We don't have a trend set up. Where's the support for the market? Well, if we take a look, one of the areas of the resistance is 1526.10. I don't see anything here that's saying support other than if you had a big break, let's assume you get through 1492.10. In terms of moving averages, that's the only thing I'm looking at there, would be the 100-day average, and that from here is about 100 and uh, uh, roughly $100 an ounce lower. That'd be a pretty big break and then another $140 lower for the 200 days. So I, do I know if they're not gonna be hit? No, can't tell you that. What about support? I'm looking at the Bollinger Bands, and that's what I think is happening. The market's gone down there and it's hugging them at this point. So yes, you hit it, now you're bouncing away. So the traders on the first time they hit it yesterday at 1494, any way you wanna cut it, they're right now $10 higher than where that number came in. That's how I look at it. In terms of momentum, you're oversold, and if the red line starts getting up over 20, it's 1683, then you can say the market's trying to correct an oversold condition. It hasn't done that yet. It's also not doing something else. It's not, at this point, trying to embed. Embed means both the K and the D lines, the red and the blue, going under 20 and trying to go sideways or still pointing lower under 20 for several days, that would change that. We're not at that point. I still think we're basically in a market that's trying to push out the bottom of the Bollinger Band, but it's bouncing away from it on a regular basis so far. When we come to GLD, you never did make it to the lower band. You got to bounce. You could still go down there at 139.46. Again, this market's going to be driven early in the morning by whatever the European Central Bank does and how the algorithms interpret each word that hits a newswire as they're flying all over the place. When we come to the ETF of GDX, the miners, still down, and this has been what we call one of these vertical price drops that has gone from 3096 to right now where you're at 2772. So the market has come down. In the process, the lower Bollinger Band has dropped away from price, so you've never have made it to that lower support. You certainly could. And the resistance in all these markets, all three, are the 18-day average of closes. When we look at the gold-silver ratio, overall it's still favoring silver as long as prices stay under the 18-day moving average of closes of that ratio, which it's doing. Resistance is back at 84.35. 
In the silver, the battleground is the 18-day average. The market fell from nearly the, what, 1950 area all the way down here to the 1811 zone. It's been hanging there. You got uh, this one break low down to 1785.50, and the market is now trading about uh, 30, what, 30 cents over that at this point, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it play around here. Now, at this point, the 18-day average of close is still support. Momentum is still pointing down. It's trying to curve a little bit, but that can go away just like that. Got to see what tomorrow's going to bring in terms of everything I'm saying. In the copper market, you can see how the copper has been backing off from the upper Bollinger Band. Here's the thing that's negative. The market had an outside day up yesterday. You, when you take out the low of an outside day up, often, the word is not always, often, that creates, if it happens, what we call a bull trap. Now yesterday, I would have had an arrow here pointing up, and I would have had an arrow right there pointing up. But if you take that out, that arrow has to go away, which it did. So now you've taken that out, and that puts into play the 18-day average is a likely target for the market to get back to to try to figure out what to do next. Take out that high from yesterday again, and you're just getting whipsawed back and forth in the market. You're overbought, not trending, have some upside bias. In the platinum market, you have a pattern of higher lows. You've had them. But now you've got lower highs. So imagine the market's doing this. It's narrowing in as everything's coming like that. It's got to decide what next. In the process, the market has been correcting an overbought condition, and the numbers are no longer overbought. Any readings under 70 are not overbought. Both the numbers that make up the slow stochastic have to get under that to get away from overbought. They have succeeded in that. So the market is still in an uptrend. We're through if the market wants to be with having to correct that condition, we'll see what it does next. Get under the 938.80 level, and that could create not then lower highs, lower lows, and put more into play the 18-day average of closes. The strongest of the metals has been the palladium market. And as you can see, it's higher lows, higher highs. It's kept it going, and it's all hand with hand in hand with the embedded slow stochastic. When that converted, that's the strongest part, and none of the others have done that. If it loses the embedded reading, like silver did, then I look, and that would happen with the red line under 80, I'd look for price in the 18-day average to come together. Doesn't mean you have to go to these numbers, that's the goal, and silver's done that. In the dollar index, the dollar index had stalled. I had actually read a chart looking at it mistakenly. You've got higher lows, I saw the lower highs, and when the market was doing this, I thought, oh, it's failing right here. It wasn't, you needed to take out this low or this low, and it didn't do it. Now that it's regained over that 98.48, the market is pointing to the upside, and you're targeting the 9900 level. To end the uptrend, not necessarily start a downtrend, 98.10 has to be hit. Barring that, supports back at the 18-day average of closes. Momentum, which had been pointing down, has now flattened itself out, as you can see. I write about this, our firm writes about it, and we do an awful lot for our traders in terms of talking our market research. And at Lynn, we'll be so busy tomorrow, there's going to be so much to write about. We have, as you know, the, right now you're going to be dealing with the European Central Bank. You're going to be looking and seeing what that does in the metal markets. You're going to be looking at a, a grain report in the morning. That's only domestic, but it gives you an idea of what it is, and we'll see world supplies of grains. You've got other events that are happening all through the day. Brits, what's going on there? We cover this in these topics, and then we have oral commentary that also comes out in our trade platforms. And now, if you miss it, don't worry. You just hit the part where it says media, and it plays them all back. It shows you who did them, what time, and you can listen to them, so it makes life easy. But we say so much better than you can write. I, I think you understand that. How do you get to this? And if you want to try my uh, research, if you haven't tried it before, it's really simple. Simply go to our website, 
www.irapstein.com. You'll see our free offers. Do that. You can call my staff. They can set you up during the daytime. And you can also click here for free offers if you're watching me on YouTube. One other piece. I talked to our good friends at Futures Magazine. Uh, apparently another firm has bought it. They've had a soft opening is from what I can see. And I've got meetings with them next week to start working with them again on that magazine. So let's see what happens uh, in terms of what we can provide to you from their research. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day and I will talk to you all tomorrow.